Welcome back YouTubers to my channel of an everyday encounter and a typical life of an ASB. It's your fully aware basically. Some of these topics that I'm addressing right now are basically not going to be included in the chapters of my books that I have been collaborating up and trying to get into action and sort it out right now. So bear with me sort of thing. I'm going to hopefully give you a heads up basically of all the topics later on of the ones that won't be in the book so that hopefully it will give you a fresher knowledge and know-how as well as and understanding and awareness basically of all these everyday topics that goes through in our everyday minds of an ASB as well as maybe in the NTs as well as everybody else out there sort of thing and all further ado this one's called AS in denial or AS denied pretty much which is basically based on the AS in diagnoses and denial about my life story when I first got diagnosed how it happened and what happened and stuff give you enlightenment of all this and more so here goes Many people with AS or the ones that hasn't been clinically diagnosed with AS or have got AS but they haven't been diagnosed properly pretty much tends to think that they could have been misdiagnosed with another condition. As I said before with me, I was diagnosed with ADD and some other conditions before AS was addressed as the matter of context of what it was. Some of these misdiagnoses, however, as I said before, underlies every other diagnosis to the point we will hide away or deny the facts that some of us does take it so to heart that we are some, someone different and we should do something about it no matter what it may be. I feel in this day and age however that with me when I first got diagnosed basically I felt that I couldn't accept it you know at the point of no return that it's like there's something wrong with me you know I am different you know all these th thought patterns that was coming to my head of the negativities and everything else that was thing how people how to accept it how to tell others you know based on to tell or not to tell and all these other questions and that hasn't been answered and I was so seeking the answers to the questions through the clinical experts in the medical field to the point of okay how are we going to go and address this to others around me you know um let's be real and honest with you all here though however while I'm here I was in denial as I said for a while during this times when I was doing for going for some tests at the t very same time I was one of many many that were misdiagnosed. I was currently under spelled in New Zealand when I was diagnosed with ADD at the tender age of 13, pretty much or even less than that when I was basically in New Zealand, which I'm still in New Zealand hopefully. <laughs> um, to at that time thought that I had ADD and some other conditions that was pre-diagnosing underneath it, pre-recurring, yet pretty much that hasn't been seeked out today for some of the for these conditions because due to the cost and lacking of um, support networks and just support in general basically of finding out through maybe certain agencies and stuff even though there is a lacking of funding and awareness and that they need to collab together and hopefully someday soon to actually get there and do them. Um, <clears throat> past the when I was clinically diagnosed at 12, 13 in Spout ADD, the guy that I was diagnosed, had been diagnosed with passed away basically a few years ago and now um, some of the records that I have even though to this day, even though I would like to be properly diagnosed with certain other conditions besides the AS that, you know, I need to basically find out what's going on. I should, as I would love to, like many of us would, you know, take it on board and hopefully think, yay, I've got a, a diagnosis, now I can find, well not find a cure, maybe find a treatment and therapy plan that can work for me, Yahoo! you know, instead of being holding out sort of thing and doubt sort of thing in my mind, see, the thinking that, ugh, what the, I need the diagnosis now, but sometimes certain things, as I said, reoccurs later on in life and now different ages and stages in life of different conditions and health problems, be it whatever it may be, sort of thing. Um, sometimes also the cost of the specialist had me back to a point where like my, my family couldn't afford my loving parents that were trying to support me at the time, even though I had specialized therapy treatments put onto place, be it speech therapy, be it basically cognitive behavior therapy, how to basically with that cognitive behavior 
base therapy that involves basically me to interact with others around me in my age group as well as maybe specialized you know special education teachers whatever they call themselves these days teacher aides that basically that at that point of time i had to socialize and actually do like what they do we do some role plays you know as if we're doing some drama sort of thing do, doing and then they'll they'll just watch how we behave and react to the environment and people around us basically so that hopefully with that environment we're in it's safe for the others around me versus safe for me even though yes don't get me wrong many people may address me as the crazy one regardless of my diagnosis today but i'm not crazy i'm just the way i'm in my dna makeup on how i go about doing things sort of thing anyway by the age that i could understand of all this you know going on of the misdiagnoses and all the treatments that i needed basically to try and get my head around every fact that yes okay now i've got as and now it's quite the norm to be accepted in my life basically and hopefully that others around me will be accepting of what's going on you know the fact was denial was sinking in a few times versus you know the self-doubt and all these other negative thoughts and by having to go through other test therapists and treatment plans before it was official and that at the time I was Th and thinking that I was crazy to the point that I was delusional maybe as they might say and maybe hearing voices inside my head you know all the inner thoughts patterns of these negatives you know you're not going to see you know you're not this 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 you you know you're going to be this and all that sort of stuff that was holding me back sort of thing tugging and towing it's like as if I was playing tug of war with my emotions and my thoughts at the same time even though I was trying to keep my emotions out of the way as well as my thoughts out of the way that didn't basically or what shall we say wasn't acceptable at that time even though you know I was down and out at some point I realized that at the point though through my diagnosis trials when I was 12 13 especially when I was in high school basically I was seeking out a counselor which my parents thought, you know, it was a bad thing, that I should have basically, you know, came to them when I had a problem. Yes, I do still go to them when I have problems. I thank them dearly, you know, with my heart, you know, of what they've done for me. As I said, putting up with my emotions, heartbreaks, my frustrations, you know, temper tantrums, my rebellion and all the like, which sometimes are like I realise that sometimes... I wanted to express myself in a way that I couldn't and sometimes I felt kind of trapped that I had to be careful what I say sort of thing because many people as my parents may thought at the time may take it the wrong way thinking that you know Karen's cynical or crazy but then you, you know at the end of the day what I'm trying to learn now the opinion shouldn't matter what I feel about myself if I love myself and care about myself enough that hopefully people will just like make the point you know um Pretty much despite the hearing of the voices inside my head, I was then basically at that tender, young, tender, teen stage age basically labelled as psychotic. Pretty much meaning that, you know, oh, crazy loopy, Kieran is loose, you know, another person out there, you know, out of her skin basically, trying to act so, like someone that she's not basically, like the evil twin we could call, label as. That's how it felt with me, basically. Um... Yet again, in the first place, when I was doing those counselling sessions with that counsellor, you know, I felt a bit unsure of myself, of the surroundings, versus unsure of what to open up to, you know, fake it to the make it, you know. I, like I said, in my delayed emotional process, I didn't know how to address my feelings properly at that stage, despite that I'm starting now to learn how to use my feelings and emotions in the right way. Um... Even though to me there were a lot of questions and unanswered questions, you know, give and take, as well as the unanswered answers to those questions that I had from me, I felt was being ignored despite the fact that, you know, I thought to myself that there needed to be a time frame that I need to be accepted and, you know, taken seriously to the point of I needed answers there and then, even though many people think that 
when something is really touchable and that I feel is important and special to me or whatever, I fight back and, you know, may come out aggressive at some point. But then again, I can be the opposite. I can be the aggressive dominant, aggressive passive, depending on its everyday situations regardless. I knew also at a certain age though, however, that I was different in the world around me to the point where I was, I thought I was happy, you go lucky kind of girl, you know, socializing with people that I felt that my world was different, you know, like a little missing jigsaw puzzle piece and pretty much like as if I had to solve a crime scene basically, that's how it felt, and like it felt like my world was crashing down, sort of thing, despite my differences of uh, the people around me, you know, be it if I was shy, socially awkward and the like, and now since as I'm growing up and mature, I'm now speaking out my opinions a bit more, I might come out rude, abrupt, as I said so many times before, but you know, that's just me, I'm trying to learn to control what I think sometimes, but sometimes it doesn't always work, because there's some, I know many people out there may be testing my buttons, be it whatever it may be, just to see who and what I am as a person, you know, see if I am like them, but sometimes, as I said before, it's good to just try to not blend in and fit into the social crowd, to stand out and actually be someone different and do something different. Um, after many diagnoses, I was so like a bookworm, pretty much myself. I'm still under this day, doing my own self-research, self-learning, self-awareness, you know, awareness, pretty much in, in the like, doing my own research. While doing this, I had so many questions running through my head again, thinking that this must not might be me, surely. Uh, why, why, why would it be working that way for others than not me? You know, all these other questions, you know, questions after questions after questions, and then I thought, what? No, it doesn't make sense. Um, is it true? That was another question. Just thought that I just had to accept this diagnosis no matter what. You know, live it, accept it, or live it, reject it, as the saying goes. Um, putting a diagnosis and get on with it, it's just this means, accept it as a part of me. I thought, great, now I've got a diagnosis. Basically, now, now I know I'm not strange or weird or labelled as stupid, dumb, or whatever the case may be. You know, of all these p label mentalities people put on you, as well as the stereotyping that many people will address on their own accord of what people should be and should not be doing, you know, how they act, think and do should be in their jurisdiction. There's no such thing as being a freedom of doing what you feel to do, that you feel is right, you know, you feel you want to, even though different, the differences, you know, of thoughts and stuff, you know, want to be the best for the best for yourself. You know, I felt to myself, you know, this is who I am, everything's now starting to make sense to me. I felt a huge weight lifted off my shoulders, a, a relief pattern thinking, Oh, great. Now I can enjoy, hopefully, what is to come. Sometimes and again, though, however, for many people that hasn't been clinically diagnosed or has been diagnosed but hasn't had a proper diagnosis, to me, my advice to you all is for, for what I've been trying to do is seek second opinions or self-research yourself and then maybe for that second opinion, question out with those people around you. Be it basically the specialists or other medical specialists, you know, that is in that field, psychologists, you know, in the works. Um, <clears throat> people in denial of diagnosis, that's what I've just said. Um, but also another heads up for those ones that people with the diagnosis or haven't been diagnosed, got to remember that, you know, you haven't changed this is who you are, what you are. You know, now you don't have, don't have to tell everyone and anyone about your diagnosis, despite that sometimes it's up to you, again, by choice, if you want to tell a close family friend or a family member versus your, you know, teachers or whoever that may be, sort of thing. you got to remember, it hasn't changed you. No way, Jose. The species has already been there with you and most of the time, despite the hidden other diagnoses, be it depression, schizophrenia, Bipolar depression and the like. Phases of denial, pretty much try to think the positives, however, despite the phases. And try to be yourself. And when, when you're down and out, even though I self-reflect and basically sometimes when I, when I get up in the mornings, I look in the mirror, I am who I am. I am beautiful. I am intelligent. I am trying to be free. I'm trying to be me. You know, do those sort of things. Maybe build yourself up on those confidence level. More on that piece later about confidence building. 
Um, sometimes I self-reflect to what can be done, what do I do, pretty much, how can I do it, etc. Everyone has good days and bad days, be it for me with AS and depression and all these other diagnoses. Basically, I'm down and out, I'm a look hippy zippy, you know, full of be energy, wanting to go here, there and everywhere, being superwoman, taking over the world, so to speak. Um, sometimes we just need to do our best, however, to strive and for successes and achieve our goals and more despite, as I said before, many people's journey and life stories is different. Every journey, life experience is different. We can't write someone else's journey, pretty much, or legacy. We only need to write our own journey and legacy. We are who we are, and we just need to basically take every day as it comes, maybe, as I'm trying to learn right now, just one day, yes, okay, I'm all about the planning, you know, taking it the, to the next level of the planning, you know, if this doesn't work, what else am I going to do? Shall I do it this way? Shall I do it that way? And the like. But that, and enough of all this before I jabber on too much. If you like this video, guys, give it a th thumbs up. Like, comment, follow me, basically, on Twitter or the channel on Facebook that I've got of SB Answers All. Subscribe to my channel for more updates of the blogs of certain topics that may not have been addressed in my book or just in my book in general that you want to know more topics about, private message me or if just to pop and say hello on that SB Answers All or hopefully, maybe, I don't know, my email address of my private one will be up there but I'm not sure. If not, just private message me basically via on SP Answers channel and thanks for watching and I'll see you all soon.